I think I had to do this video because um, I get involved in so many different comments with people in love with Tesla and I think I wanted to express my opinion and maybe this is an easier way to do it. I know this is probably going to be a long video, I don't really care and I don't know how many are going to actually listen till the end and probably all the Tesla lovers are just going to uh, skip through it instead of going to uh, go all the way through it to see all my facts and somehow why I'm actually thinking this is a, a bearish kind of situation for a long-term investment. Um, I hope I'm wrong and obviously I'm not an expert. I don't really know anything about anything. Um, all I know is that I read all the data that I see and I kind of try to put things together logically and then think on the long term and having that kind of equation in mind I get to get a result and that result in my head is not exactly the ones that probably all the bulls in Tesla uh, are expecting so um, I hope this is a friendly conversation I don't really care if you're going to show your hate about what I've got to say about Tesla uh, I don't really care uh, I think there's a place for both you and me in case you love Tesla good for you I don't hate Tesla I don't hate Elon Musk uh, I don't hate anyone to be honest it's just my personal opinion on where I think Tesla is going and where I actually see Tesla in future um, and I think probably this is going to be just a subjective type of conversation or a monologue I don't know uh, in which I'm going to share what I see in the automotive market and not just Tesla in particular so I think we can start the conversation with actually asking ourselves if Tesla is going in the right direction by going down or will they actually uh, bounce back I recently got in polemics with uh, Tom Nash and I don't know why he's turning into such a pumper in Tesla and my logic is because both him if you watched him since the day I watched both him and meet Kevin um, and if you do just a little dive into their portfolios within Tesla uh, they're down massively and I know people with influence try to pump things up but I don't think they have enough influence to probably bounce Tesla back not as much Elon has uh, but I I've got nothing with Tom, I've got nothing with uh, Meet Kevin. Um, I respect them and I think they are very good with what they've done in life. Uh, but this is just kind of my confession in Tesla and it's got nothing to do with them directly, but maybe with some of their thoughts about Tesla. My One of my best friends is a big Tesla bull and I've always been a Tesla bear-ish because I've got positions in Tesla. Uh, in one of my portfolios. I also got some uh, shorts in Tesla as well. Uh, so it's, it's not a secret. I'm a trader and I don't really care about what's going to happen long term because I don't see things uh, in a very long term. But I have actually a kind of swing type of pie in which I invest and in that tech portfolio, uh, Tesla is a, a major player. But these are my personal opinions, not trying to trash anyone or blame anyone. I'm not a financial analyst. An analyst. Uh, these are just my opinions on what I see, uh, what I see happening in the market. Um, so this is just a moment of entertaining and I hope you're going to uh, be entertained. If, if not, uh, just reflect on your life if these things bother you. Uh, so do you want to uh, hear my kind of realistic opinion. Uh, if yes, maybe carry on watching. Um, I've always been skeptical on Tesla uh, and not because I hate the fact I lost the good uptrend and didn't buy when they were very, very low. Uh, but I always thought this is a two pumped type of company compared with the quality of the products that they're actually selling. And I'm only referring here to the cars. I'm not talking about anything else that Tesla does. Uh, but maybe some history for everybody who actually uh, are listening to understand a bit Tesla. Most people won't know that it was funded in 2003 and this happened kind of like 20 years ago uh, and there were, it was founded by a guy called Martin and a dude called Mark. I'm not going to give you the, um, the surnames, you can do that as well. And funny enough, if I run a survey, maybe most Tesla investors won't know that this is not actually founded by uh, the biggest manipulator of the world, which is Elon Musk. Um, Musk came in later in investing in a sizable amount in Tesla 
and obviously he helped raising funds from capitalists which believed him good enough and him obviously being a very good manipulator uh, definitely best guy for the job to be able to raise funds right and in 2008 they launched their first model and I will call it a model and not a car model because up to this day I don't think they yeah you can call them cars they're just some sort of a tech uh, on four wheels and don't hate me I guess I can have my own opinion uh, if Tesla are producing cars or not so they launched that massive cheap plastic roster in uh, with a massive iPad in 2008 and since then they lost uh, launched the S model XY model and 3 model and to pump the market again which I think again is a kind of manipulation they released the news on a futuristic look Cybertruck which guilty I find it very uh, very interesting from a design perspective um, because probably I like anything that's futuristic looking um, but again just the fact of promising launching that I think is just a way of manipulating the market but then looking at some numbers Tesla had a gain of maybe more than 8,000 percent in the last uh, 10 years but the past 10 years looking monthly shows that Tesla experienced uh, monthly drawn downs of more than probably 20% showing on uh, how volatile and how manipulated this stock was uh, maybe pre-split uh, going back on the pre-split days uh, they go got to about $414 a share and since then dropping like a rock but um, not a, a rock that you would draw uh, throw in space but a rock which would actually drop massively and you see it where it is today so yeah since then they, they drop in quite fast and from my personal opinion uh, alongside with where the market is going I think Tesla probably is going to uh, to the place where it belongs and this is again my personal opinion and I say this uh, as being my personal opinion because I always thought that uh, Tesla stock is a pumped stock and just because it's being traded so much and it's been volatile for such a long time I think it's probably uh, more volatile that Bitcoin is and Bitcoin come on is just the crypto which has got nothing to do with the real world as yet um, and having a stock as volatile as Tesla just shows how pumped this was and a very good opportunity for people to make money and manipulators will always make money in stock market um, and they'll trade with people's emotions and they'll uh, try to use different catalysts try to use different techniques uh, if you do some sort of technical analysis uh, in being able to pump the stock and actually take profits out of it and uh, taking that out of the way yes maybe they're leaders for now in the electric vehicle sectors and I don't know why people get so excited about that uh, let's talk about the big automotive world but me being kind of the outsider in Tesla I see a massive slowdown in that due to uh, taxes on weights taxes on all sorts of different things road taxes huge increase in electricity and I see a crazy slowdown in buying EVs and why would you invest in electric car uh, after running maths there is no saving buying an electric car in England uh, there's no point for me of buying one and I see people around me family around me who actually bought electric cars uh, there's crazy massive struggle with them uh, there's so many downsides doing it um, which is the price of the car which is crazy huge um, installing installing electric pots home in case you have the facility to do that in England uh, a constant kind of battle in finding working plugs on the road plus available spots and I'm talking about not just Tesla but Tesla is as good as uh, the national grid in which you'll struggle to find uh, working ones and as well finding spots available spots for it so shifting from a petrol or diesel car into a, an EV car I think is kind of pointless and let's not forget the pump that happens since 2020 in EV and how this green energy uh, kind of is going to self save the planet come on guys uh, let's be realistic here we see a massive surge in EV cars and basically Tesla because uh, they only produce EV and they got the facilities to being able to produce EV but it's pumped because all the governments and everybody they're offering schemes even in Romania you can uh, trade in a bad old car for buying an electric car and the um, government helps you to do that it's the same in UK it's the same in US it's the same everywhere and it's been the same everywhere so there's a crazy massive pump in EV and obviously Tesla has got some cars on the shelf which people can buy so why on earth why on earth will 
the big boys in automotive uh, jump on that road when there's no demand for it come on let's be realistic okay but yes maybe in years to come we can talk about a better adoption of green cars i don't know but for now they are not as efficient as it looks and i don't think most countries are ready for this adoption uh, for sure england is not ready for a massive adoption of evs so why tesla stock was so high uh, as i always thought just pumped and easily manipulated and some people made so much money over it and those people are usually uh, youtubers talking about how great tesla is uh, including elon who pumped it enough not being put down uh, for manipulation and assessing his behavior in how he manipulated crypto market which has no legal implications on manipulation i can eliminate the fact that maybe he used his techniques uh, in uh, manipulating the stock price uh, and what i'm trying to say is he didn't cross any bad lines in manipulating this stock uh, and the way he does things you can easily see how many sheep is following and i don't like that type of manipul uh, manipulators um, he can be a nice guy he can be a smart guy and he obviously is but we can't eliminate the fact that he's a manipulator and i'm not going to enhance on that because if you are a big Elon Musk fan, uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but that's because I think in some sort of levels he's manipulating you. Uh, and just not being able to see the quality of Tesla compared with a decent car, again, I, I don't know. Uh, just to be clear, I worked with Tesla and I manufactured, I, I worked in manufacturing bits for Tesla in the past and I can't disclose these bits because obviously uh, everything that I can do with different companies uh, is, is NDA locked. But the quality of Tesla cars, come on, um, I work with so many different automotive manufacturers and I know how things are done in automotive and I know how a car is properly built. Um, and when you compare that with Tesla, uh, you can't say Tesla is a car. Uh, yes, it can be nice. Some people like their futuristic design, which I don't think is futuristic. I think it's very simplistic uh, because they try to obviously make profits and they claim they make so much profits. Um, but I would not call that futuristic. If you want to see a futuristic car, look at Lucid, which again is kind of a branch of Tesla because people working for uh, Tesla are now working for Lucid uh, but they're kind of designing something which looks futuristic and even Neo which is a Chinese manufacturer uh, produces uh, futuristic, uh, futuristic cars when you look at the interiors and you try to trade um, luxury for, for the money come on uh, there's no way you compare Tesla with any of the luxury cars uh, I know Mercedes is, is picking up, probably ramping up in EV, and you can see the design, and you can compare that with uh, Tesla. I mean, come on, it's a cheap plastic, very cheap plastic, with a huge tablet, and it's not uh, the design I need. Yes, in terms of functionality, and in terms of what it can do, from a software perspective, from a tech perspective, which is what I think Tesla is, um, yes, they can probably be superior for now. But let's assess a bit the automotive market and plot some numbers and see how Tesla kind of relates to that. Uh, Tesla sold so little cars in the whole picture. And I know it can look, um, if you compare uh, Tesla with everything else in the EVO market, it looks like Tesla is selling so many cars. And my worry is that most people bet on Tesla being capable of ramping up and keeping up with the demand. Um, I got some numbers in Excel, which I, I put them all together, uh, which I want us to have a look at moving forward and maybe draw some conclusions from, uh, from there, uh, because I think it's good to discuss and compare apples with apples and not apples with bananas. But I think before moving in to show you some numbers, I think it's important to bring up the, uh, the missing dollar riddle. And I hope uh, that many people know that and reason I'm bringing that is because so many times in life we tempted uh, to compare different things in different scenarios and take things from context and make a good pretext on, on that. Um, and I think this riddle is kind of showing that if we compare things the way we shouldn't or if we compare different sums or if we compare different uh, equations, sometimes we end up with results that we should not end up with. 
but maybe if you end up with them you might think that you might be right and you might think uh, that's a good opportunity on doing something so um, let me tell you that riddle quickly and the riddle is um, it, it can be told in so many different ways but there were three guests checking in in a hotel room and the manager says that the bill is thirty dollars so each guest had to pay ten dollars later the manager realizes the bill should only have been twenty five dollars and to rectify this, he gives back $5. He gives the, the bellhop a $5 as five $1 bills to return to, uh, to the guests. Uh, on the way to the guest room, obviously, to refund the money, the bellhop realizes that he cannot equally divide the five $1 bills among the three guests. Um, and as the guests are not aware of the total of the revised bill, the bellhop uh, decides to just give each guest $1 back and keep two dollars a tip for himself to proceed with uh, and proceeds to do so as each guest got one dollar back each guest only paid now nine dollars bringing the total paid to 27 dollars uh, the bellhop kept two dollars which when you add it up to 27 it comes up to 29 so if the guests originally handed 30 what happened with the remaining one dollar so when we compare unrelated amounts and we play with numbers from unrelated numbers and amounts, uh, we, may, we may end up with uh, something which looks completely different from the total uh, numbers that we should look at and compare them to the total sums of the things and look at the bigger picture and, and try to look differently than most people do. And I think that's how I picture Tesla in all this conversation because I rather look at how Tesla is performing compared with the whole market in the car market instead of just looking at EV because now there's no 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 indication that anyone um, in the auto market uh, at least not the big 10 15 um, auto manufacturers are looking at making EV cars and shoot them in the foot for the big amount uh, of the cars which are needed for this world but let, let's look at some numbers and I uh, reason why I've put them like that is because I, I can probably find enough data for for us to play with um, and I hate that I don't have my mouse with me um, but the thing is um, maybe we can we can ignore those years in which we don't have enough data from uh, Tesla and maybe just look from 2013 when they actually start building up some numbers in terms of um, in terms of sales um, so um, on column D you've got how many cars they're actually sold in the world and then uh, you'll see the numbers from Tesla which look decent uh, for a startup car manufacturer and then what is more interesting for me is how much that percentage of Tesla cars represents I mean, what's the percentage of Tesla cars compared with the total amount of cars, uh, sold cars in the world? Um, yes, this is on a nice positive trend, but that's not because Tesla is performing so well from my point of view, even though they, they, they perform well in terms of how many cars they sell and how much profit they make on which again, we can discuss about that a bit later. Um, but people, uh, are actually so keen on seeing how Tesla is performing and uh, actually saying how tes how well Tesla is doing and how capable Tesla will be uh, in terms of ramping up, in terms of being able to uh, ramp up uh, and build up so many factories and be so profitable and so on and so forth. And makes me wonder why on earth Tesla is profitable when they invest millions, billions of dollars in making companies and making factories and again I'm not an anal a financial anal analyst I don't know I'm only looking at some numbers and that's what I'm trying to uh, to look at so instead of of losing dollars on our hotels bills because we look at different pictures why not looking at this um, and just let me know why on earth we are not looking at this and then tell me why should Toyota or Volkswagen or GM or Mercedes or BMW or even big manufacturers in China look on only doing EV cars when the demand is for 
only one, two, three, let's say 5% in case my numbers are not perfect. 10%, why should we fight on getting that stake for now instead of small ramp up? Um, all the governments are obviously trying to drive the green energy and they're trying to kind of uh, get everything to be green energy in the future but there's no guarantee that is um, electric batteries because I don't want to get there um, I'm not saying uh, they're not efficient but I'm not saying they're the best solutions for what green energy means at this stage and I'm not sure uh, this is going to be the future future of green energy when it comes to cars uh, nobody can say that um, thing is there's a very small amount and when people are comparing numbers on Tesla with what other people are doing in, in the market, of course Tesla numbers are going to be big in EV. Of course their margins are going to be big in EV. Of course when you swim in a small aquarium on your own and you only get uh, the breadcrumbs that fall down, you're going to get fat, of course. But let's not compare the small aquarium with the big ocean. This is a big ocean. And um, the other day I, I commented on, uh, on Tom Nash uh, Twitter saying that the competition is, is really creeping in and it's, it's closing the gap. And I did run some analysis in, in how Tesla is performing. And again, at first sight, it looks like Tesla is doing great. But then I wanted to study the trend on how great it's doing from year to year. And the trend from being like that is, is, getting, is getting smaller and smaller to flat to probably uh, creeping down. Uh, come on, the demand of EV will drop because why on earth would you buy an EV? Uh, till you're not forced to buy an EV, you won't buy an EV. Um, and nobody's forcing anyone to buy an EV. And who knows what's going to happen after 2025, 2035 in States. So, um, there's still so much debate and there's still so much gray area in which, uh, come on, there's so many uh, things that we can't control and we don't know. But till we know, there's a huge demand of diesel and petrol cars, that's for sure. And the big boys automakers, even though they're making smaller profits, yes, because they know how to build cars and they build cars for everybody. How many luxury cars people can afford? Why don't you go and buy a Tesla if you're such a big Tesla fan? If you make so much money out of Tesla, why don't you go and buy a Tesla car? Um, fair enough, isn't it? Um, I want Tom Nash, if you listen, go and buy a Tesla car if you're such a big pumper and such a big lover of Tesla. Um, yeah, I don't think he is. Uh, he just wants to make uh, money on it. And most people want to make money. That's why we invest, uh, not because we like the company so much. We want to make money and that's it, bottom line. Um, if you're trying to tell me you're such a big Tesla fan, and obviously I'm not picking up on Tom, he's a nice guy. Um, and I listen to all his videos and probably one of his biggest fans. But uh, just because we have opposite opinions doesn't make us enemies. No, I love Tom and I love everybody. But yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think we big massive fans on, on things. We're here to make money and we invest in stocks to make profits on it. And uh, not just because we want to support Tesla. Nobody does. Uh, but yeah, cars worldwide. There are more than 1.4 billion cars in the world. And Tesla compared with the worldwide with cars on there, it's, it's around 0.25%. Um, very little. Um, factuals, it takes on uh, building a factory in massive circumstances in which there's so much money pumped in, more than probably 200 days to build a factory, uh, which if you build one like Giga uh, Shanghai in China, they claim they can do probably uh, Model 3 and Model Y up to 750,000 cars a year. Um, and the cost to build that is two billions. Mind blowing. Um, so theoretical Tesla capacity is two millions. And to ramp up and build 750 more, that takes about a year and two billions to do it. Um, I mean, come on, how fast you can think uh, you, Tesla can actually ramp up? And is there a demand to actually ramp up is there a need for those cars to ramp up i don't think it is when you're actually going to go into a shop and you have so many different alternatives of buying cars which 
depending on the ranges you want, depending on your preferences and colors. I um, don't think people are going to actually go just for Teslas. And when people, big automakers, which know how to build car, know how to build automation, know how to build supply chains, and they're stopping to buy credits for using EV in states, what is going to happen to Tesla? And that's my bearish kind of long-term um, theory on Tesla. Uh, not because they're so bad today, but because everything is going to change. And when I say that competition is creeping in, I'm not talking about tomorrow, maybe not next year, maybe not next two years, but look at the numbers. Why on earth would you build EV cars? Why? I don't think there's a huge demand for it and nobody's forcing them to do that. And all big auto car makers are starting to ramp up slowly and steady into EV. Uh, there's no resources, huge resources into batteries, into uh, full self-driving and all so on and so forth, because there's no need, come on. Uh, Tesla, yeah, pioneers, good, good for them. They make enough money, uh, good for all the, um, all the people who invested in it, but there's not a huge demand on EV. So competition is picking up on EV, it's a fact. Apart from not holding a huge share of the total market, they start losing in EV total sales. And that's kind of worrying for me as an investor. I see so many different uh, competitors picking up, so I'm worried. And with competition coming, there goes profits, as you can compete with that cheap looking car. And they still have decent battery range, but let's not close our eyes on Neo, Lucid, uh, and more to come, who are building very good looking cars and better for performances in every way. But these, these ones obviously still have to prove, and I'm not claiming that they're so much better than Tesla, because we can compare numbers, but let's not forget uh, where Tesla started. But one thing is for sure, they are closing that gap in years to come. It'll be amazing to see kind of a, a drop plot in, uh, in the percentage of, of how much profit Tesla is actually making, if not increasing the money and the margins on how much they lose in the supply chain in building up the cars. Because there's obviously a, a, a strong close correlation between uh, dropping the profits with price increase in the car. And obviously they try to keep up the profits in the cars with increasing the prices for the car. And it's normal, reason why you make more models and you don't keep up with the model you're making. So you're making new models because you can keep up the prices on supply chain, change slightly the design and increase the price just because the car looks differently and obviously uh, keep up the margins of profits. But if we look at some, uh, some facts, Tesla has already uh, lost Europe uh, to EV to GM uh, and are claiming full on shift and on green cars. And what would that mean for Tesla? Um, I don't know. And another good point uh, in that is how much the euphoria and all sorts of government schemes influence the push in EV as we talked earlier. Um, there are so many factors influencing the pump of EV and pump of Tesla in particular uh, because they were ones who were able to actually sell. Uh, still very little in the whole picture, very little. And I show you the whole picture, very little. And as much as people like to believe Tesla is a good car manufacturer, it's fair to say they are a good tech company, which sometimes I doubt they even making any profits from selling just cars. Uh, let's not forget uh, how much profit they make from the state of work regulatory credits uh, from selling them to different automakers. And to avoid penalties, many uh, automakers buy this from Tesla and maybe uh, probably, if I looked at the numbers correctly, probably around three billions in the last five years, which is a big cash inflow from just selling those credits because some automakers can be bothered. But this cash inflow won't last forever as most automakers will deal with that themselves and embrace a small and steady shift into uh, probably greener cars as we talk. And um, we already see that happening. The reason why I don't see Tesla uh, as a good and successful business model, not for future, not without strategizing in the right direction. Yes, they are leaders for now and they are leaders of that small flock, which is just a uh, strand of sand in the whole ocean um, it's almost nothing and looking at the numbers not sure if they can actually fight uh, experienced automakers in dealing with huge demands 
and offer good value cars as well as price effective for consumers into Q uh, massive market adoption. adoption. Uh, there are so many issues that they have with the cars and, and even experienced automakers still have issues with the cars, lots of, of callbacks and stuff. But at least they have more experience and I think experience plays a big role in that. And uh, Tesla having good experience in tech, I'm not sure how much good experience they have in ramping up to huge numbers and being able to ramp up to kind of uh, being able to keep on being the lead in EV sector and not faring just a small slice of that. Tesla will carry on being able to supply and if they ramp up, if there's need for Tesla obviously, uh, they're going to be able to ramp up the numbers but they're not going to keep on leading um, dramatically when it comes to EV and that's my long term proposition and kind of bearish theory when it comes to Tesla. But again, I'm not an advisor in any way um, and I don't believe in Tesla if they carry on having Elon in charge. Uh, they are a giant tech company with good potential moving forward. Yeah, but I do think uh, company survived and his help in manipulating um, was was a good way of, of opening opportunities for, for Tesla. And people with, uh, will criticize me for voicing my opinion and I'm fine with that. Uh, I do have a small tech portfolio, as I said, and Tesla is part of that. But uh, on a day of 10-15% up, like it was yesterday, I'm going to just leverage and short Tesla like I will always do. Uh, Elon Musk will keep on selling and trading Tesla. Fanatics man in financing his crazy fantasies and ideas, and I don't like that. But um, as a final thought, let's stop calling Tesla car manufacturer. And my personal opinion, again, for what it has to offer in the car market, Tesla stock should be probably around $30, $50. And if they keep on growing, they will uh, share a slice of the EV market. So I'm not sure why would they be higher than that. They bet a lot on FSD, uh, which is too far out. Uh, this, can, uh, this can probably be regulated and sold as a service to people who know how to make cars. And I think that's a good thing for Tesla to start selling. Uh, they can't wrap up upfront on no demand. Uh, people claim that they can ramp up so easily. I showed you um, two billions later, which I don't know where they go in terms of investing and how much cash goes against the books when it comes to investing in the car making, but you actually still have profits. I don't know. I'm not a financial analyst, analyst and I don't know how to think uh, balance in the sheet. Uh, I think I have an idea, but obviously I can't say that out loud. But I don't think that it's so easy to ramp up in making cars uh, and just keep them in the park because nobody wants to buy them. Um, and the numbers prove that there is no need to ramp up production up and obviously it's dropping dramatically with everything that's happening in the world. Um, and obviously with the current delays and energy prices, we will experience an even bigger drag of the uh, EV deployment. Uh, we can talk on and on and on and I guess uh, these debates are far from being over and I don't think anyone will probably agree with me. But we leave my final thoughts. I believe Tesla is a great company not amazing, far from being perfect. Uh, but I also believe they are far from reality and numbers and volatility proves it so uh, due to people talking, uh, taking advantages and pumping money to make even more. And I see that happening and I, I'm gonna see it happening probably even more. And I believe it's manipulation driven by Ellen who is only sponsorshipping his fantasies and uh, moving into the next kind of journey for him as he was the richest guy around, but still with zero influence when it comes to big decision. And I think that hurts him and it hurts his massive ego. Um, and he probably thinks now he's got a voice uh, by uh, having Twitter uh, to tweet even more to probably more bots and people who are already following him. So I'm not sure why he wanted that voice. I don't know. But I strongly believe that Twitter acquisition affected Tesla and its proper investors, which doubt his probability of leading Tesla further. Um, I don't know. Guys, uh, you can do whatever you want with your money, but would not keep my myself, and talking about me, would not keep them all um, in Tesla's basket. Uh, be wise and invest whatever you want, 
and buy whatever you want. And I know many people won't agree with me, but we will have to learn how to cohabit together. Um, I don't hate you and I will love you even if you hate me. Um, if you don't agree, let me know in the comments and tell me why. And subscribe to my channel if you want to, so we can talk more about it. Um, I don't usually talk about uh, stock market in such details or trying to talk about different companies in such details, but recently I got involved in commenting all sorts of things on people's Twitter or even on stock tweets and people are showing so much hate because you can have a different voice than what they believe. Um, and I thought I'll make a video in which I express my voice and kind of my long, um, my long term theory on Tesla and why I think Tesla is not necessarily a good investment for future. Again, I've got a small share in Tesla. Um, and I'm just going to put more in that portfolio, tech portfolio, which Tesla is part of it. Uh, but I would never put all my eggs in Tesla's basket because looking at the big picture, and there's a big picture which neither I or anyone can see uh, in what's going to happen in 5-10 years. Um, numbers indicate that there's no need for EV cars, as big as people think. And number indicates that big automakers, you hear lots of fud and lots of crying um, over the internet in how they're not ready to embrace EV, blah, blah. Uh, there's no need for that. I'm sure these people can handle their businesses better than we think. Um, and people say that they're losing money and probably they do because obviously uh, everything is impacted by what happens in the world and supply chain and there's so many delays in being able to deliver cars, but there's a demand for petrol and diesel cars. Tesla doesn't break that gap, uh, having hybrids and being able to, uh, to close the gap in the demand for auto, uh, automotive world and the demands for cars. Uh, the demand for EV is very low uh, compared with the demand of the full picture. And that's my theory in it and that's my take on Tesla. Uh, like it or not, uh, it's up to you. I hope we can respect each other, and I don't. I, I don't mind if you if you leave your comments in there, even if they're not positive or necessarily uh, kind of embracing what I think. But um, if you think I have a voice and you want to hear my voice, uh, carry on subscribing to my channel. And if you like this type of videos, I'm happy to take uh, and research because obviously I research Tesla because I'm passionate about that. Um, and I'm happy to look in different companies. And if you want my personal opinion on different companies, uh, tell me that in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to have a deep dive in that and look at the numbers and judge the numbers from a normal person who looks at numbers. Yes, I am a big numbers guy because um, I'm a Six Sigma kind of analyst and I like to look at the numbers but I want to look at them logically not necessarily judging by oh yeah there's a bit of growth in there and that growth uh, it has to for sure indicate a good thing not necessarily uh, things can grow but trend wise things can go wrong um, and if you again like the missing dollar riddle if we look at patching things in the wrong pictures we might end up uh, putting a moustache to Mona Lisa and we don't want to do that do we if you want more I'll be more than happy to deep dive in different companies and judge them maybe through my opinion logically and not necessarily uh, thinking on how a financial analyst thinks uh, most financial analysts are wrong by the way that's a statistic and uh, rather people thinking logically in the bigger picture uh, they make good enough money to be able to uh, to sustain their lives and their dreams of becoming financial free um, it's a dream who knows i don't know if tesla is going to help you do that on the long term it did help more people and it did help a lot of people because they believe good enough when they started ramping up but this is not talking about how good they were it's talking about if Tesla is a good investment, long-term investment or not. 
uh, and that was my take on it. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for listening in case you listened this far. Uh, that would be high appreciated and let me know in the comments below if you reached uh, this far. Uh, thank you all for support and talk soon. Bye.